And as I pan to the right past this tower that remains is Chinatown that will enter. And there are oriental looking people here too. Yesterday we saw the east walls and today we're looking at the west walls of the medieval town built in 1280 to 1283. This is a drawing of these towers made in 1783. It's fascinating because they continue on down in this other direction. Those may have supported either a roof or standards. I wonder how recent that lintel was, is. Do you wonder if this ditch here is reminiscent of what was learned from Hadrian's Wall? Looking at this gun port made out of better rock, smooth original rock, um, you can just imagine what the rest of this wall would have looked like when it was new. It's interesting up here there are what the Ch Chinese might refer to as crenellations. And in response to my comment, it looks like they built up a few of them. They seem too wide. Great for cannon, perhaps, but bad for archers since they make such good targets. Apparently there's a sporting event. No big surprises to what it must be. Soccer, for sure. The addiction to soccer in here and in Europe is just profound. Well, this shot certainly will contain a mix of the Chinese and the English given Newcastle Arms. We'll walk down there and then walk about. We're at St. Andrew's Street and I'm guessing that's what this church is. Again, notice the tower-like design, but rather flat and stodgy in design otherwise. This little bit and that street I looked down, which we'll now go walk up, is all that there is of Chinatown. Well, my guess is the bars are cleaning out, or soon will, <clears throat> and up to the stadium they'll go. They're wearing shirts that say money on them. I'm turning left right now. It's an interesting old building up there. This building is labeled the Salvation Army and the City Temple. You wonder if that's the original outside of the building restored, used for a different purpose, of course. But This, I think, is the Cathedral Church of St. Mary that I could see from the railroad. Interesting detail on this building. I'll focus down on this corner and then pan vertically down it. This is a Clarendon house. You'd think there'd be a statue there. And then this interesting balcony-like fixture. Here I'm approaching the railroad station with that cathedral on my right and I'll turn for a moment and we'll take a closer look at it. Perhaps an earlier post office. Pretty old building once upon a time when this was a real center of activity. This is probably the church that we've seen a lot of in most of my shots. Notice again how fortress like these things are with those narrow slits there, the gun slots. <laughs> and I wonder if that's the castle keep down there I've been looking for. It has that ring to it, doesn't it, visually? This is the church I spent a lot of time in yesterday. I just didn't recognize it because I turned left instead of going past it towards the river. And it's down there that we find castle keep and next to the church in a pretty little 
um, relaxing treed area. It'd be nice if it weren't so cold for me, although the footballers are, or the soccer fans are walking around in t-shirts. But here we're at St. Nicholas Chambers at Amen Corner. Now what exactly these buildings are, I have yet to discover at this point. I told you so, had a lot more class than you thought. Next to it is the Milburn House. I'm assuming that's not a bust of me, but of Milburn. So we're standing in front of Blackgate. And that's this. An earlier picture. Built between 1247 and 1250 during the reign of King Henry III. It was the gatehouse of the Barbican, a walled defensive entrance passage leading to the castle's north gate. The gatehouse could be sealed by a porticulus, latticed grill, or gate made of wood, metal, or a combination, mounted in vertical grooves in the walls that are still visible today, and we'll go look at that. Raised or lowered quickly by means of chains or ropes attached to an internal winch. The narrowness of the Barbican passage and its angle to the west of the castle wall meant that attackers were restricted in their means of attack and were left exposed to fire from the castle defenders. Now on either side were turning bridges. I assume that means bridges that could be swung at uh, 90 degrees to the entrance we're looking at now so that it would make it even more difficult for people to get across. Very little remains today except for a couple of um, little rooms off to the side apparently inside. The name Blackgate, although ominous as it sounds, came from Patrick Black, a London merchant who occupied the building in the first half of the 17th century. Perhaps these are the side rooms that are still original. And I don't see the grooves that the uh, vertical doors would have gone up through unless those are the remnants of it there, just that little portion. It's interesting to imagine occupying this. And back in the 17th century, imagine if we could do what I've often fantasized and relive, in fact, through some technology, or see at least how life was at that moment, any moment in the 17th century, when Black was here, for example. This, of course, is probably all restoration, but it makes you wonder if the depth of this went much greater and the grade was much lower at one time. But you can see that even still it's occupied. And I think this view of the front gate answers a couple of the questions I had, and that one is, yes, it, the grade was probably much lower, and if not much lower, certainly there was this moat, or at least ditch, a la Adrian's Wall. So the castle was built in 1080 by the eldest son of William the Conqueror. This is how it looked in 1834. Certainly a almost Nazi-like allusion to the Romans or the Greeks, but so heavy and dead seemingly. 